Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today, we're going to be talking about the newest album from Lights called Skin and Earth. So I'll be the first to admit that I've been really hard on Lights in the past. The Canadian indie synth-pop artist who has fluttered around the edges of the mainstream for the past couple of years now, especially in Canada. And for me, it can feel a little awkward because I keep getting the feeling that I should really like her work a lot more than I do. Her debut album, The Listening, was a slice of bubbly, exuberant electropop. Siberia was moody and experimental as it fused in dubstep. And Little Machines, it split the difference between the styles. And yet, I would struggle to say that outside of isolated moments that these records just never really quite connected for me beyond just a couple songs. The framing of the writing and license delivery never quite meshed with the synth tones that she chose. And in years where there was an abundance of pop artists exploring similar synth pop sounds, particularly churches, I never really thought that Lights' material stood out. But I have covered a lot less synth pop in the past year. Hell, in 2017, I barely covered the genre at all. So maybe without my own personal saturation, I'd find something more distinct and special on this album, Skin and Earth, which I'm finding covering, which Lights herself has described as her most carefree and fierce album to date. Okay, I'm in the mood for some pop like this in an increasingly dour 2017. So what did we get? Well folks, I don't know what to say here. Go in expecting synth pop because I've only heard so little of it in 2017. It's what Lights typically makes, only to discover that this isn't really a synth pop album. I guess I shouldn't really be surprised by this. Lights has always hewed pretty close to conventional pop music, even at her most experimental. She tends to follow the trends pretty close, but let's not mince words. You could place this album in the pack with Alessia Cara, Tove Lo, and Halsey, and you would not be all that surprised. Now, to be fair, I'd say that Lights is overall better than all those artists I just named, but if our spectrum for this style of pop runs from Lord on one end and Dea on the other, Light, she's firmly in the middle of the pack. Maybe stretching into the better tier with Zara Larson on her best songs, but unfortunately slipping more towards conventionality as you dig deeper into the rest of Skin and Earth. It's a decent album, it's very listenable, I see why she still has fans, but I'm not crazy about it at least not as much as I want to be. Because believe me, I don't want to have to say this because Lights is the sort of artist I would like to support more often. She's got an open, bubbly charisma that feels more earnest and sincere than many of her peers, helped by the fact that her vocal tone is naturally better and more expressive. She's a good singer. In terms of emotionality, I tend to place her in a similar category as Carly Rae Jepsen, but Lights plays the certain unearthly, fantasy-inspired style that does help her stand out and can anchor points where she brings more intensity of which she's definitely capable. I like to hear her do more rock stuff. And when she chooses to couple her album release with a post-apocalyptic comic book series, that makes sense to me given her artistic persona and style. It's just a shame then that with few exceptions, her producers don't seem to be giving her all that much that's distinct in terms of modern pop production. Yes, Corin Rodick and Purity Ring is behind the boards for one song here, but if I told you the majority of the producers here also worked on Halsey and Dua Lipa's debut albums, sonically would not surprise you. Now that's not saying this is bad. The brittle, tropical bounce of Until the Light had some decent groove. The muted twinkle of Morphine, it's certainly pretty. The ebbing, slightly off-kilter, bassy synths of Moonshine, they work for me, as the ghostly pianos have almost had me. And the twin punch of Savage, which is the best song here, along with new fears for the darker, heavier groove and a more established guitar line, that's easily the high point of this album. But between the trap hi-hats, the pitch-shifted vocals, and how much so many of the other tones can feel swamped out in reverb or blurred into some underweight melodies that then translate into unremarkable hooks. This is a pop sound that feels distressingly conventional and not especially flattering or memorable if you've heard a lot of it, especially for an artist like Lights who you can tell is aiming higher with some of her content. Take a song like the haunted murk of magnetic feel with the guitar line. For as spooky as it's trying to be lyrically, the production just never really has any sort of edge that connects for me. Or take the lead off single Giants, which I'm Unfortunately, it might be the weakest song on the project as the guitars echo across the verses and they don't remotely fit in with the lumbering blocky hook. The grooves just don't match up all that well there, but fine. There are moments that I genuinely like from Lights that rise above a lot of her pop peers on this project. I'll give her that. And that's when we hit the lyrics. Now again, apparently this is a project with a comic book tie-in that tells more of the story behind the album and probably fleshes out more of the distinctive details. But since the full comic line wasn't really available at the album's release, I needed to consider the self-contained album on its own, as I did with Xanthacred a couple weeks ago. And you know what? Credit to Lights for actually trying to incorporate a distinctive metaphor into each individual song. It's 
not particularly layered or all that deep. This is pretty standard pop material. But again, I can see some vestige of emotion that goes a little bit above and beyond when it comes for pop. But from there, there's not a lot I can really praise about the writing and structure of the album because if there is some sort of narrative stretching across this, I'm not really seeing it. And that's before you get songs like New Fears that definitely imply something as part of that comic book story, but don't really tell more of it on their own. But fine, let's take the narrative out entirely and just consider these as pop songs and honestly, not really wowed here. Lights is obviously definitely convincing and playing big, earnest emotions. The reason why Savage has managed to transcend some lyrics that could read it as a little bit adolescent is her intensity, but it's hard not to get the impression that her partners aren't exactly giving up themselves in the same way that she plainly does, which leads to the trio of toxic relationship songs that end the album, with Magnetic Field showing her getting sucked back in, Fight Club having her actually push back, and almost had be showing the complicated feelings around the breakup, probably the best of these songs. But in the middle of the album, outside of the more developed central metaphor, it's hard not to see many of these songs as your by the numbers, outcast run wild pump up anthems that lack the specifics to really cut and resonate more deeply for me. And again, Lights is good on these songs, but if the album was to tell a story or feel more self-contained or help these songs stand out more individually, the writing had to step up with more detail in order to flesh out the narrative feel a little more distinct or add layers of emotional complexity or narrative complexity or the production had to get a little bit weirder or more distinct and since neither really happens none of it will really grab me or really stick in the memory but as a whole Look, I've been sitting on this review for some time now. The album came out over a month ago, and I've wanted to like and support this, and I feel like I've been really hard on Lights as an artist, again. But it's all rooted in a feeling that I want to like this a lot more than I do. A really good lead performance can only elevate pretty conventional production and pretty decent writing for only so long. And without a real edge or greater self-contained detail, just doesn't stand out as much. It's definitely decent and passable, I'm giving it a strong 6 out of 10, but again, I wish I liked this more. And at this point of her career, I'd like to see Lights buck the traditional pop architecture and producers. It's not really doing her any favors at this point, and artistically, I think personally she's moved past it. But as it is, eh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Folks, I know, I know what you said. A lot of you got angry with the last review. I wanted to like this more too. It just, not a lot to it as a pop record. Just didn't really stick with me. Not a lot of those melodies and hooks beyond Savage really connected. But hey, if you want to buy the record, link's in the description below. And there's the poll for you to tell me how wrong I am. I know you want to. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get involved in supporting this channel and my scheduling process, link to my Patreon is right over there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you get to add albums, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. Love to see you guys contributing and getting involved, especially with the demonetization nonsense. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.